Hi there, and welcome to The Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life, using real food, and we keep it real simple. And today, we are gonna make a super decadent and delicious flourless chocolate cake right in these little individual molds. Um, they are so easy to make and taste so delicious. Let's get started with that. So first I'm gonna add three cups of water. And this water can be warm. Um, that'll speed up the process for it to steam. So you can put in three cups of warm water. I have the rack inserted on the low position and we are gonna turn on the Ninja Foodi and put it to the sear saute, high is fine, and hit the start button. What we're gonna do here is use our Ninja Foodi as a double boiler. So you want your water level to be below the rack um, but high, almost to, almost touching the rack, but definitely not going over the rack. You don't want the rack to be submerged in water because then the bottom of your pan is gonna get wet and that um, doesn't work well for melting chocolate. And I have here six ounces of dark chocolate chips. You could use semi-sweet if you like. I just prefer the richness that the dark chocolate brings. We will be adding sugar in, so it will be sweet enough. Um, but if you like semi-sweet or milk chocolate, certainly use the chocolate chips that you like the most. And we're gonna add in one third cup of butter. And then we're gonna let the Ninja Foodi do the work for us by melting this butter and chocolate together. So I'm just gonna set this right on the rack. So as the Ninja Foodi heats the water in the bottom, it's gonna create some steam, and then that steam is gonna gently heat this aluminum pan, which in turn is gonna transfer the heat to the chocolate. Now we want to do this gently because the melting point of chocolate is between 86 and 90 degrees. We don't want this to get too hot, um, but the good thing is I can keep an eye on it and I can see uh, you know, how it's moving along and I can stir it from time to time. But for now, we're just gonna let the Ninja Foodi do the work for us. You might wonder why I don't go ahead and put the steam, um, the, you know, the pressure cooking lid and put it under steam. Well, that's gonna create trap steam, which is gonna put water into our chocolate and we don't want that. So we're gonna do it this way and it's gonna work out just perfect. While that's happening, let's get our eggs ready. The eggs in this dish are an extremely important part because we're not using flour or any other type of leavening agent. So the eggs are gonna give the body and the rise to our little cake bites. So it's really important that we uh, follow some tips for those. First thing we're gonna do is get them separated. So we're gonna want one bowl for the egg whites and one bowl for the egg yolks. And the reason why we're gonna do this is because we're gonna add in some sugar to the egg yolks. Then we're gonna whip those egg whites until they form stiff peaks, and that's gonna be folded in at the last minute and really give some airy fluffiness to our chocolate cakes that are flourless. So in order to uh, safely crack your eggs, you wanna hit them on a flat surface. So I'll just move this right here so you can see. You don't wanna go against the bowl because you might get egg shells into the bowl. Go one time, it will, it will crack down the middle. Just gently put in your two thumbs and pull apart. Now when we're separating eggs, one of the easiest ways to do that is to let the shell do the work. So go ahead and just move it back and forth until that egg white drips down and you have nothing but the yolk. I'm putting my egg whites into the stainless steel bowl because I actually had this in the refrigerator until just, um, just before we started filming uh, because it's gonna really help keep these egg whites cold which is gonna help them whip up faster. Okay, so now that we've got the eggs separated, I'm gonna move the egg whites away for a minute, we're gonna work on the egg yolks because that's gonna be the first thing that we put into our chocolate. You could do this with a stand mixer. You could do this with a hand mixer. It'll go a lot faster. But just in case you don't have those things, I just wanna show you that it is possible to do it with just a fork and a little bit of our muscle. This is one quarter of a cup of white sugar. We're gonna put it right in to the egg yolks and then we're just gonna to start to whip them up. What's gonna happen as the sugar incorporates into the egg yolks and I continue to put air in by whipping them with this fork, they're gonna get light and fluffy and they're actually gonna turn a pale yellow. 
We're gonna take this to what's called the ribbon stage, which means when I lift this up, it will go over the surface, form a little ribbon, and stay just for a second or two till it dissolves. So let me get to this. Take a break real quick from that because I see the steam starting. So I wanna go ahead and kind of move the butter around and uh, the chocolate is already melting on the bottom. So I just wanna give that butter a chance to get in there with that chocolate and give us a nice melted ganache. This is kind of like a ganache. It doesn't have the heavy cream, but. Oh, it's looking good. It's gonna to come together quickly. you can see although we're not quite there yet the mixture is becoming a little bit fluffier and a little bit paler I still have to do this for a few more minutes and always you could use your hand mixer it goes a lot quicker Okay, that's looking great. Um, and most of the chocolate is melted, most of the butter is melted. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. I wanna now bring that heat down because I don't wanna risk it overheating, which can cause your chocolate to seize up and then it becomes really difficult to work with. So we want to avoid that. So I'm just gonna turn this off, give it a stir. This pan that I'm using conducts heat really well. It's, uh, this one is a six inch Fat daddy -O cake pan, which I will link to below because they're incredible. If you're using something else that might not conduct the heat, this might take a little bit longer, but it will work for sure. You could even use a glass bowl here that we're not going under pressure, so that would be safe. So really anything you have that is safe for stovetop, you can put in here and use to melt your chocolate. Now the residual heat that's in this chocolate and butter mixture will go ahead and melt the rest of it. So I'm just gonna leave it alone for now and finish up with these eggs. Okay guys, I'm almost done with those eggs, um, but the chocolate is done. It is completely melted. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get it out of here because we want to let it cool just a little bit before we start to temper our eggs into it. Um, and I'll tell you all about that in just a second. So let's bring it out so that it's no longer with the heat there underneath, and this will just cool down a little bit. The reason why we want this to happen is because we do need to combine these two, and they need to be closer to the same temperature, or this hot chocolate will start to cook our eggs and we'll have little curdled eggs, and that doesn't look too good in our fancy dessert. So we're gonna let that cool and finish up. These have already uh, almost doubled in volume, and that's what we wanna see. They have lightened up, but they are not quite sitting on top like a ribbon, so I just need to go just a little bit longer. All right, how exciting, we are there. So you see how it just sits on the surface a little bit? I mean, it'll, it just sits on there for a minute, but that's when I know that these have been whipped enough. So, perfect. Okay, next thing, let's just give this a stir. Because again, we want to make sure it's cooled down just a little bit. Now the chocolate's thickening up a little bit and that tells me that it is it has cooled down some. Um, so what we're gonna do is add just a little bit of the egg mixture into the chocolate. This is called tempering. So what we're doing is bringing the two temperatures of the two different mixtures closer together so we don't cook those eggs. So just pour just a little bit, probably about a tablespoon or two. and just stir it in. And you'll see immediately if your mixture's too hot, you'll see the eggs start to cook. I've done that before when making pecan pie. And sometimes I just leave it and sometimes I start over. All right, that's looking good. Now we can get the rest of our eggs into the chocolate. Get that off 
there. So now my eggs are like a pale yellow. That's also another indicator that they are whipped sufficiently and have enough air incorporated in them to do their job in our flourless cake. Okay, so I'm gonna get this mixed up. Ordinarily, I would add some salt, uh, even to baked goods, even to sweet things. Um, however, this recipe is adapted by Tyler Florence's Cracked Earth Chocolate Cake. I've been making it for years, and I just sort of modified it, uh, took the ingredients down by a third, um, and made, you know, of course we're gonna do it in the Ninja Foodie. He didn't call for salt. I trust Tyler Florence, so I'm not gonna use salt in this either. All right, that looks perfect. Now we're gonna move on to our egg whites. So this is the next important step because again, this is going to give our lift and body to our flourless chocolate cake. I'm gonna use a whisk for this just because I find it to be a little bit easier um, than a fork, but uh, I have done it with a fork. You can do it with a fork. You can also put this in a stand mixer um, or use a hand mixer. But I'm gonna just do it this way for you guys. So same principle, I'm just gonna incorporate air and whisk these egg whites until they become stiff peaks. They're starting to get really nice and frothy, and that is what we want, but it's not there yet. This is really um, increased in volume, just like our um, egg yolks did, and you can start to see that they are forming little peaks. We would call this a softer peak. So I do, when I pull this up, I want it to stay straight up. That's gonna be a stiff peak. So, just a little longer. Almost. All right, I think we're there. Yep. See? That is a stiff peak. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so now we are going to mix these two together by gently folding in the egg whites into the chocolate. We wanna do this gently, you don't wanna beat it in because you don't wanna take the air out of all these fluffy egg whites that we just spent a few minutes uh, whisking up. So what I like to do is use my spatula here and I just put in a little bit of the egg white mixture, maybe about a third of it. And then I'm just gonna pick the pan up and I just gently fold it over. So I'm incorporating it without deflating it. When it's almost incorporated, go ahead and add in another third. And repeat, do the same thing, just fold it in. It is okay if you can see some of the egg whites. Okay, I'm gonna add in the last third and fold those in just like we did the other two times.
This kind of cake reminds me of like a super fudgy and moist brownie um, meets chocolate mousse. It's one of my favorite cakes to make. Okay, so we have a nice mixture that's all folded in. It is okay if you can see a few of the egg whites. That's not going to bother anything. And now we're going to get them into our molds. Now that our chocolate and egg mixture has been incorporated, we're going to go ahead and prepare our um, egg bite pan, which the, this is, I guess, what most people use these for, for egg bites. But um, I think they're perfect for these flourless chocolate cake bites. What I have here is a blend, and I will link to the recipe below because it's pretty fantastic. Um, it's a blend of flour, oil, and I think Crisco, and I use it all the time. It's called uh, cake pan grease, and I use it all the time when I'm baking. It Nothing sticks. I mean, you could make the a white, really sugary cake, and it will not stick. It's fantastic. And I don't want to use a lot of it because I don't want the white to show on the outside of our beautiful chocolate bites, but I do want to brush this into every little section here, uh, especially on the top, just to prevent them from sticking. I made these the other day, and um, six came out, and one didn't, so I figured we'd go ahead and just grease these just very lightly. All right, perfect. Now I'm gonna take a scoop, you could use a tablespoon, anything, and I'm just gonna scoop this in and we're gonna fill it up with two scoops, and we want it to be about two thirds of the way full. This will rise up, and we don't want it to overflow. The other day I went ahead and put in some chocolate chips into the center, because my goal was to make a molten lava cake, and it sort of worked and sort of didn't. Um, the center got a little bit more done, so I'm gonna skip that step today, but you certainly can do it, because it does add a little gooey goodness in the center there. Uh, what I found though is after I cooled them, and, and when to eat them again, then the center was hard. And I'm like, yeah, that's no fun. So I'm gonna leave it out this time, but feel free to do that step if you like. These are a little fuller. So what I'm gonna do is kind of just gently tap down. Just kind of gently. Don't want to deflate, so I'm just gonna tap down just like, yeah. They're fine. Okay, that's great. Might be able to add a little bit more to each one. That's looking good. Add a little bit more into this guy. And maybe a little more into this guy. Okay. Oops, and one more over here looks like it could use just a little bit more. All right, perfect. Now, these um, egg bite things, no matter what brand you get, they come with a lid, okay? And this lid is not recommended to go in the pressure cooker. But we do need to protect the top because when we go under pressure, there's a lot of steam. We don't want any of that condensation to get onto our flourless chocolate cake bites. So what I'm gonna do is cover this with foil and I'm gonna do it pretty well. Like I wanna really, tuck it underneath so that we reduce any of that steam and condensation from getting in there. Just tuck it really well. All right, so we just wanna set the this inside on this rack and get our pressure cooker lid on. Turn the Ninja Foodie on, go to pressure. We want high pressure. We're gonna take the time to six minutes. We're gonna do six minutes of high pressure followed by four minutes of natural release. Make sure your um, black valve here is turned to seal and hit start. 
So the Ninja Foodi came to pressure and then we cooked under high pressure for six minutes and now it is um, natural releasing for four minutes and then we will do an immediate release to, to relieve the rest of the pressure. You can see here that the keep warm button is on. I have talked about this in a couple of other videos. Sometimes you want the keep warm on and sometimes you want to turn it off. Now, what I do want to clarify about that because I've done some research is that the pot is not heating up with the keep warm function right now because it's in the natural release mode. So this is not gonna kick in, even though the red light's on, until the pot drops to a certain temperature, which I'm gonna estimate, although I could not verify this, to be around 140 degrees. So right now, this pot is probably at about 230 degrees inside. So this keep warm button is doing nothing. It's not gonna slow down the natural release. I've, I've heard that talked about, it's just not gonna happen. Okay, so let's go ahead and immediate release. Okay, our button has popped up. We're gonna go ahead and remove this lid and I like to do that away from me. Set that over there. Get our handy dandy little mitts here and bring this out. Okay, I'm gonna take them off of this rack for a minute because I actually wanna get the rack back in and I'm gonna put this chocolate. I've got this little bit, it's just about two ounces of chocolate. I'm gonna put this back in and just set this on and we're gonna let that steam uh, start to melt that chocolate. That's gonna be part of our garnish. Okay, I'm gonna slowly take this foil off. There is a chance that they've risen up enough that it's gonna to stick to the bottom of the foil. So I just wanna kinda of be careful. Although this is the bottom, so even if it's stuck a little bit, it's not gonna make a big difference at all. Okay, they're looking good. All right, they look good. I think what I'm gonna do is let them cool right in here just for a few more minutes before I dump them out, just so they, they finish setting up. So the residual steam has um, done its job fairly well to start to melt that chocolate, but I wanna get that moving along because we have a raspberry sauce to make. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on, sear, saute, turn it on high, and go ahead and start. That's just gonna get that water a little bit hotter and melt that chocolate just a little bit quicker. So we have the cake bites. Now, what I can see here is that I probably could have filled them all the way to the top without running the risk of them um, overflowing. So go ahead and use all of the um, chocolate mixture when you wanna make your cake bites. There's plenty of room in here for that. So now I'm just gonna gently kind of turn them over and press each one individually onto my cutting board. See if we have a, yay. All right, perfect. So they look great, absolutely perfect. Now I'm just gonna let these sit here because we have a couple of things we're gonna do before we assemble our fancy desserts. Now we're only gonna assemble two. This is, you know, for a romantic dinner. Um, what you can do with the rest of them, and this I think is a great, great tip, is they freeze beautifully. So you can put them in the freezer and then take them out an hour or so before you wanna serve them. And that way you can have a little treat that is individual size um, anytime you like. So I have some heavy whipping cream in here that was in some ice water. It's very important to keep your cream cold. So while we were filming this, I wanted to make sure it stayed cold. So leave it in the refrigerator until you're about to use it. What I'm gonna do is, you can either sweeten this or not sweeten it, either way is fine, but I'm gonna just add just a little bit of sweetener to it. So about a teaspoon or two of powdered sugar. And then we're gonna go ahead and make some fresh whipped cream. And this is a Pampered Chef item, it's super easy. You just keep plunging it down until you get the consistency of cream that you like. You can even make uh, homemade butter with this, and I've done that. This is really convenient when you just want like a little bit of whipped cream. Because making homemade fresh whipped cream, it doesn't last that long. So when you just need a little bit, this is a great option. Okay, I'm just gonna give this chocolate just a little bit of a stir around. It looks like it's moving along just fine. I'm just moving some of the um, 
chocolate that hasn't quite melted, trying to get that to the bottom. We are almost done with our whipped cream. So let's take a peek here. All right, that looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off and grab out our chocolate. And I'm going to just um, use my spoon to kind of move this around and let that heat from the chocolate, the melted chocolate, melt the rest of these. I've got some that are a little stubborn, so I think I'm gonna put it right back in, but I'm not gonna turn the Ninja Foodie back on. I'm just gonna set it right back in here. That residual steam's gonna take care of it. So let's get our plate. So we're gonna move these over. Now let's have a little fun. Let's plate this fancy dessert that's super easy to make. I'm just gonna take this cream here and just get a good tablespoon or two. I'll put it right down here. Do one more. Move this all in and I'll make it easier for me. Okay, perfect. And then put another one over here. Then we're just gonna kind of make like a little bit of a little pillow. Good. Doesn't have to be too fancy. So the residual heat from um, the heated chocolate finished melting the rest of those chocolate chips. Um, and you know, you could always set it back in the foodie or you could even put it in the microwave uh, for a second if you need to. But definitely if you're gonna microwave chocolate, you need to do it at very short spurts, like five to 10 seconds at a time because you don't wanna overheat the chocolate or it will seize up. So now I'm done with the Ninja Foodie with the water in there. We're gonna make our, our raspberry sauce in here. So I'm gonna um, real quick and dump the water. I'm gonna turn the Ninja Foodie on, sear saute. We have about a half a cup of raspberries. These are just frozen raspberries. I like to get them fresh when they're in season and then I individually freeze them. So I put them on a sheet pan, freeze them for a couple of hours and then put them into a freezer baggie. And they're really easy to access that way. You could take out a few at a time or, or a scoop or, or whatever you like. So I'm gonna throw those in. They have now had a chance to fall. And we're also gonna add in, this is a half a cup of sugar, but I'm gonna add in about half of that, so about a quarter cup of sugar. Then we're gonna let the pan heat up. It's gonna start to um, break down the raspberries, dissolve the sugar, and we're gonna end up with a nice little syrup that's gonna go over top of our fancy dessert. So I'm gonna move this out of the way for right now, and we're gonna get our chocolate balls covered in chocolate. I've got this uh, parchment paper here, and we'll take, let's take the prettiest two. This one looks really pretty, and let's see, this one looks really pretty. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just drizzle this melted chocolate on top. Now, this is totally optional. I mean, these things are so delicious um, just as they are, but this is for a special occasion, so I want to make it special. So I'm just going to go from the center, go around, and let it drip down the sides. Doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't have to go all the way down, it's fine. It's gonna sit in that pillow of whipped cream anyway. Just move it around, let it go down the sides. Then you could repeat this with all of them and you could even freeze them with the chocolate on top or you could freeze them without the chocolate and add it when you want and don't add it when you don't want. It's all good. Okay, that's good. I'm just gonna let those sit while our sauce starts to break down these raspberries and I'm gonna give it a stir here. So what we're looking for is just to concentrate all the flavor out of the raspberries, get that sugar dissolved so it's gonna be like a, a sugary syrup. And then we're gonna put it through a strainer just to get rid of the seeds. I mean, it's no fun to bite into raspberry seeds when you're having a nice, smooth and elegant dessert. This will just take a few minutes. Oh, it smells so good. 
I always say that, don't I? It smells so good. But it does. It smells really good. Oh, gosh. Got some parts here that are starting to, um, you know, bubble a little bit. That's good. I'm just going to move them around because I don't want anything to scorch here. This is a great thing about the Ninja Foodi with the nonstick pan. Cleaning this afterwards is going to be a breeze. You don't have to worry about all the sugar um, getting stuck onto the stainless steel pan because this one's a nonstick. Okay, you know what? I think that's good enough. There, turn it off. I'm just going to lift this up. This is going to be very concentrated. right in there. This is a fine mesh strainer, so it is going to collect any of the seeds while allowing the juice to go through. So we're gonna get a lot of concentrated uh, raspberry flavor, but none of those seeds. You can see it's already starting to happen. If you wanted a thicker sauce, you could always um, do this step and then put your sauce back in with a little more sugar and it will thicken up for you. But I think this little syrup is gonna be just fine for us. Be careful when you're doing this that you don't take your spoon or spatula and go on, on the underside. Get a clean one to do that or just use the bowl to help get it off because if you, these have seeds on them and then you're gonna get seeds into your sauce. All right, that's plenty. And I could probably extract a little bit more out of there but this is gonna be fine for what we need. We go. All right, so let's finish getting this dessert all assembled here. Then move these out of the way. So we have a little more room to work. Okay, so there's a couple of ways you could assemble this, and really, it's up to you how you want to do it. You can put the, um, the little cake bites right on top of the pillows of whipped cream. You could put a little bit of the raspberry underneath. You could top it with the raspberry. I mean, it's really, it's up to you. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of this, and I'm going to put it underneath. Just because when I bite into the dessert, I really like to get that whipped cream and the tartness from the um, raspberry sauce. I just think that's great. I'm just gonna pick these little babies up. Put them right here. Whoops. A little messy, huh? Okay. Now we wanna top it with a little bit more of our raspberry. I'm not doing a very good job, guys, of being fancy here. All right, the final thing. And this, again, totally optional, but it's just a little bit of powdered sugar. Just put it right on top. Don't worry if it goes on your platter, that makes it look pretty. And there we go. Super easy and delicious. Dark chocolate flourless cake bite on a pillow of whipped cream with a raspberry sauce. Now let's taste it. All right, now for the best part, we're gonna bite into this. Now I wanna do it this way so you guys can really see how decadent and fluffy this little cake bite is. goodness. Wow. It's like a little pillow of chocolate. It's, it's so soft and so good. Moist. 
I just can't say enough good things about this. I really hope you give them a try. You're going to love them. And stay tuned for our next video. It's coming up next. This is the perfect dessert. Seriously. It is so good. Mmm.